The National Institutes of Health, also known as NIH, is the primary agency of the United States government responsible for biomedical and public health research. For 14 years, Stephanie Evans and her mother Joanne have been traveling to the NIH Clinical Center in Bethesda, Maryland to participate in the study of a rare disease with a big name, methylmalonic acidemia or MMA. MMA makes it difficult for Stephanie to break down and process protein in her food. Toxic acids build up in her bloodstream and cause an array of life-threatening health problems. There are many types of MMA, but Stephanie has a more severe form of the disease, requiring strict dietary management and avoidance of sick contacts. Illness in these patients can cause devastating strokes and organ damage. Stephanie eventually had a liver and kidney transplant to replace her damaged organs. The complexities of her disease make treatment difficult. One in 48,000 newborns will have MMA, but there's hope. Dr. Chuck Venditti, a senior investigator in the National Human Genome Research Institute, part of NIH, is working with the largest group of people affected by MMA. He and his dedicated research team are conducting a study to understand MMA at the molecular level. Soon, they will begin clinical trials to test several new treatments. Stephanie's a spunky, <laughs> a spunky little young lady um, with methamalonic acidemia. Um, she knows what she wants to do and <laughs> she lets everybody else know that she gets frustrated with all her restrictions of what she can eat and can't eat or that it's a med time and that her day is controlled by what medication is needed at what time. She was born perfect, um, and, um, but then she quit eating um, and went into a coma on her um, second day of life. So she was transported from our local hospital to Indianapolis, because um, we lived in Southern Indiana at the time, um, to the local hospital, um, not expected to live. Um, and then that's when they diagnosed the methylonic acidemia um, on, her, on day three. With the symptoms of MMA, many babies will be affected in the first few days of life. And typically, the baby will be cold, may not be feeding well. Someone may think the baby, baby has a very serious infection, which can occur in, in babies. And the patient or the baby will slip into a coma. And that baby, unless they're rescued with usually dialysis, emergency hemodialysis, they uh, have a, a chance of passing away. Some babies that escape this uh, neonatal crisis. And again, in the U.S., we're screening babies, all babies, for MMA. Hello. Good to see you again. Thank you for coming back. Well, many of our patients, of course, come from all around the United States. MMA is a very difficult condition to manage. We oftentimes collaborate with all the referring physicians in, uh, from all the centers around the United States to help the families with very, very difficult decisions. For example, deciding when someone might need a liver transplant. This is a very big procedure for a child, or a liver kidney transplant. That was a nightmare at first. I mean, she had like severe, severe, severe complications and was on the ventilator for like three weeks. We weren't even sure she was going to wake up. So we were really nervous and scared. Um, but, and then when she did wake up, she couldn't move. I mean, like seriously, she was just laying there and just screaming. And then like one day she could lift her fingers. Then she could lift her hand. Then she got it up. Then she could move her hands, but she couldn't move the rest of her body. And so it took a long time. I mean, maybe two to three months before she could like walk. And so we had to go to rehab for a while and stay there for a while until she could walk enough that I could take care of her in a house for, without all this, you know, like extra stuff. We had to go home with some extra um, supports and we had to convert a room downstairs into a bedroom because she couldn't do stairs. Um, and it took her a good year to really recover from the surgery. Now we're like almost two and a half years out. She has been really good, yeah. A lot more mobile, <laughs> she eats, she's energetic, yeah.
Another form of MMA is called cobalamin C deficiency or CBLC. These patients can have serious health problems if not diagnosed early and often have vision issues and developmental delays. However, patients with CBLC can be treated with vitamin B12 injections, which can help improve the effects of their disease. A Brazilian couple's lively son began showing symptoms of CBLC just 20 days after his birthday. Meet Shan Jinyu. He's three years old. He likes playing a lot. He's very... Uh, uh, handsome. Yeah, he's <laughs> handsome. Uh, he's very uh, excited. He likes playing a lot, running. Uh, he's a happy boy. Mm -hmm. I think he is, uh, is always... Uh, sm uh, smiling. Smiling and playing. And uh, he loves us too much and uh, every time he calls for mommy and daddy yeah. and uh, um, he's a happy boy. Yeah. He was born in uh, April 10th in 2015 and everything was okay in pregnant every, everything was okay but when he has 20 days of life uh, we start to think um, anything was wrong and then we go to the hospital in Brazil. Since the beginning, our Bible is the articles of Dr. Venditti and team. Yeah, we met Dr. Venditti last year on a conference that was in Rio. Yes. Dr. Venditti and Jen and Dr. Irene, they saw Shandinho and, wow, he's, he's very well, he's doing great. You're doing a great job. It was like a, a bit of a conversation, not nothing very specific. And we were trying to get here since the beginning because uh, always we we think uh, we uh, where we can go with Shanjin, a place that can help him to be better and better. Yeah, since the diagnosis, we wanted to be here. So, but Shantin was very young and maybe the, he could not uh, do all the exams. So we have to wait a while and we were very, very, very excited to be here and waiting <laughs> for this moment so long. And now we are here. Yes. <laughs> and our family from Brazil, and there's been a number of wonderful families from Brazil with cobalamin C deficiency that have reached out to myself and members of the team. Um, some of them have what looks like slowing or delay of their eye changes. That's why we would consider patients that are not from the United States um, as very important to teaching everyone about the condition, not just children here in the U.S. Since I've been at NIH and saw, since I, we saw our very first patient in 2004, I've had a chance to evaluate many, many patients with MMA all different forms of MMA. I think we are over 200 patients that we're following now with types of MMA, and many of them have the MUT deficiency type. Now, with the MUT deficiency type, MUT stands for methylmalonchoemetase. Some people say mute. I say MUT. Um, that is the more severe type. It was wonderful. It was really uh, comfortable for us to see that people are interesting in CBLC and that people are... Yeah, they are very kind, they are very... It's like, it's like being at home, starting uh, from the children's in, every, everybody there, and the team here, Dr. Dr. Venditti's team, they are very kind, they are very helpful. Uh, well, we, we are very supported here with the team. We really trust in everything they are doing here. The next stage is when we were get, what you mentioned is getting ready for an interventional trial. And this is going to, we think soon, we are hopeful very soon that we will be having new therapies for MMA, new genomic therapies. And there's three different types that we've been working on. One is an mRNA or message RNA based therapy. The other is a AAV, adeno-associated viral gene therapy protocol, 
And the last one is one that uses genome editing to try to fix the gene in the liver of the patient. I really hope to see that future families, kids don't have to go through all of the illnesses and missed out on things and sicknesses, and then they can have a quality of life that's similar to what a child's life is to, you know, be able to do things. And she lost her hearing and her vision, suspected because of the MMA. So if they could have treatments and still be able to see and hear and you know, enjoy things that they like to do, then it would, of course, I wish she didn't have to go through all the, you know, the bad stuff and lose things, but it'll be nice to know that she helped others. No, we feel deeply connected, not just myself, but all the members of my team to the families because, so for taking care of the patients for all the years, we really know just how difficult it is for, for the children and for their parents. Stephanie's mom, I think, I don't know if she's received, had a, had a night of sleep in her in 20 years, 30 years. I think she's basically, every waking moment is checking on her daughter all night long, adjusting her feeds, checking her um, G-tube, making sure she gets her medicines, making her formula. It's really an unbelievable effort. So we really feel for the families we know how difficult it is uh, for all the caretakers and the families for them man and we you know we feel for the patients every time they get admitted and every time they have a, a serious medical complication it's really hard because you've got you've got to be so extra protective and germs and not let people be sick and you can't really you can plan things but you have to know that your plans are going to be canceled if she gets sick you know you lose a lot of money if you try to plan a trip because you want to give her the you know best of life but then you've bought your tickets and she's sick and you can't go and then trying to work full time but to care for her and then be sick and then know you have to miss work because now you have to you know care for her or just even missing with all the appointments um, and so then you're working very very long days to make up your hours because you missed during the day, um, you know, to take her, but then to also try to give her, I hate using the word normal, but to try to give her a normal life and let her do all the things that she should be able to do. Well, I guess the only other thing I would say uh, would be, you know, we're so appreciative for all the families coming to, to participate in our study. And for some families, this can mean taking the entire, their entire vacation instead of as we would think, maybe going to the beach or going to a, a lake or going on a trip, they come to the NIH and their child with MMA is admitted to the hospital and the children donate blood to our study. The families donate blood and they spend all their time, precious vacation time away from work even. Some people have had to take medical leave to come here to be in the study. And so we're really appreciative of all the families and all the children that have given literally their blood and time to us. So for that, I'm super appreciative. And, and, and just so that the families know, we would be nowhere without them.